there are several methods for finishing 3D prints. You can either leave the model as it is, you can also print the model in multiple colors right away, or you can simply paint the model. And today I will show you exactly that, how to paint your 3D models. My name is Veltan, this is Craftmats 3D, and let's get started. It highly depends on the project itself, but you may get to the point where multicolor printing just isn't enough anymore, and even the best special effect filament isn't quite the best fit for your project either. And at that point, you might just want to paint your model. That was pretty much exactly the case for me when I sculpted this display diorama for my Nintendo Switch. It features a dragon and I simply felt like I have to paint this model to do it justice. So how do you go about painting a 3D model? Well, the first step, as always, is to clean the model. So first you have to remove any supports that there might be still on the model. You also have to remove any rough, uneven parts and you have to roughly sand the surface and fix any seams that you might see. So let's start with the first thing, remove any supports that are still left on the model. I was able to easily remove my supports with some pliers, but depending on the way you printed your models, you either have to remove them with a little bit of hot water. So for example, if you printed your models with a resin printer, some hot water will help you to remove the leftover supports. Or if you have issues removing regular supports, then you can also use a heat gun or a hairdryer to heat up the contact area where the model and the supports meet. This will make it significantly easier to remove them. When I was trying to print my model, I actually had a failed print. The supports right under the face of the dragon just weren't strong enough to support it while it was printing in midair, so the support broke away. I actually heard this happen, I heard the support snap, so I was able to stop the print right there and then, and later on I was even able to save it, so I didn't have to print the whole thing again. By the way, that this print failed was entirely my fault, because printing this model as it is is very very hard, and I probably should have designed it differently, or maybe I should have split the model up so that you can print it in multiple parts. Anyway, I simply printed the top part of the dragon again, exactly where the last print failed. After removing supports, it was time to roughly sand the surface. Here I simply removed some very rough surface imperfections, nothing more. And after that it's time for step number two, smoothing the 3D print. I have an entire separate video on that, but I will quickly go over the process. So first I cover the whole model in some spray on filler and leave it to dry. Once the filler has dried, I use some filler out of the tube or you can also use something like Bondo or something similar to fix any of the big gaps or seams. I had a very big gap right here where the print failed, but on a normal print you shouldn't have as many gaps as I had here and your gaps shouldn't be nearly as big as this one. Wait until everything is cured and then you can start sanding the surface. I personally find that 240 grit sandpaper is more than enough, but in some cases you might want to use some finer sandpaper. On my previous video about smoothing 3D prints, there were quite a few comments telling me that there are also different ways to smooth 3D prints that I did not mention in my video. So I want to mention these alternate methods for smoothing 3D prints here. For one, you can use a heat gun to smoothen your prints. This works best on PLA, but it's also possible to use on ABS and ASA. You can also use UV resin to smoothen your prints. This method works by simply coating the whole print in some UV resin and then you can cure it with some UV light. This method is quite good because UV resin will smoothen the prints quite well and you can sand UV resin as well. But resin in general is slightly toxic before it cures and during the curing process it will actually create toxic fumes. So you have to wear protective gear when you are using this method. Another method that I found quite interesting is using PU varnish. So basically just brush on the PU varnish on your model and let it dry. It takes some time until it's fully cured, but you can also sand it. And the best of all, it's not toxic. And the final method that I didn't mention in my previous video is using Mod Podge or some white crafts glue to coat the whole model. Simply mix the Mod Podge or the white crafts glue with some water and then apply it on the whole model. The craft glue will initially be white, but it dries transparently. And it can also be sanded and painted later on. Whichever method you use is up to you, but once you are done, it's time for step number three, which is cleaning the 3D print before we prime it. 
Basically, all you have to do in this step is clean the print from any dirt and debris before you apply the primer. Simply use some soapy water to wipe down the whole print and then we can move on to number four, which is applying the primer. There are a lot of primers out there. You can, for example, use a primer from your local hardware store that adheres to plastic, or you can use a primer that is specifically made for painting miniatures. I personally prefer primers from Citadel or from Army Painter. In this instance, I used white primer from Citadel. When you are applying the primer, make sure that you are either outside or in a well-ventilated area. It's also recommended to wear a protective mask while you apply the primer. Apply the primer in multiple thin coats. Don't apply too much at once or you will end up with some ugly blobs on the surface of your print. Let the primer dry and when you see any areas you missed later on, you can simply apply a second coat of primer on top of the first one. And before you ask, yes, there is a way to paint 3D prints without a primer, but more on that later. And if you are wondering what a primer is in the first place, it is basically a type of paint that adheres well to a surface and makes it so that paint that is applied to the surface of the primer itself, so that that coat of paint won't come off easily, even if you scratch over it. But now let's finally move on to the final step, step number five, which is painting the 3D print. Once you have applied a primer to the surface of the print, you can use a large selection of different types of paints and most of them will adhere well to the primed surface. I personally prefer using acrylic paints because they are quite cheap, they are readily available and you can mix them and dilute them with water. But you can also use enamel or other oil-based paints if you prefer those. For this project, I am using Citadel paints and paints from Vallejo. The first thing I usually do is I coat the whole model in a base color. In this instance, I use marine blue contrast paint from Citadel, but you can use any paint you want. Contrast paint is just a special type of paint that dries darker in recesses. This will add some nice contrasts right out of the gate. I use the same color for the whole model, but you can also use a different base coat for the different items on the model. So for example, you can use one color for the dragon, you can use one color for the crystals and so on. Next I used an airbrush to establish some base shading. Don't worry, you don't need an airbrush, I didn't have one for many years. You can simply skip this bit and start painting with brushes right away. But if you are interested in airbrushing, then I can highly recommend these airbrushes right here. They come with a USB compressor and even though they are not great, they are more than enough for the beginning. And they tend to be quite cheap. Once I had all of the base colors established, I started painting all of the details by hand. As I mentioned before, you can mix acrylic paints to make them lighter or darker. So I mixed some darker shades of blue to paint in some shadow areas. I also manually painted in some scales to add some more detail to the model. Finally, I used some very light colors to add some highlights, especially to the crystals. When it comes to brushes, I am using very cheap brushes for the majority of this paint job. The only time where I use expensive brushes is for the very, very fine detail. And that's also what I recommend. Don't get expensive brushes right away. You don't need them. You only need them if you want to add very fine detail or if you want to use some advanced methods. Once you are done with painting your model, there is also one final optional step that you can do which is sealing your print. You don't actually have to do it, but it can help protecting your print in the future. I didn't seal this project, but you can seal your project by using some transparent varnish or you can use some transparent acrylic sealer. Simply apply the sealer in multiple thin layers, much like the primer before. And with that, we are done. We have successfully painted this 3D print. Oh, and I also designed and printed this cartridge and SD card holder. I used the crystal cluster model from Triple G Workshop for that. And this is what the final result looks like.
Before I go, I promised that there are some alternate methods that you can use to color prints that doesn't involve using a primer. For one, you can use paints that stick directly to plastic. Now, a lot of paints will mention that they don't stick to plastics or that they will stick to most plastics. But lucky for us, all of these paints will stick to most of the plastics that are used in 3D printing, including PLA, ABS, PETG and ASA. These paints can then simply be applied directly to the 3D printed model and they will generally adhere quite nicely. However, even though this works quite nicely, I still always recommend to use a primer before you paint your 3D model. The primer will simply ensure that the paint doesn't come off easily. All of the models I used in this video and all of the models I mentioned in this video are linked in the description below, including the dragon and the crystal. And the same goes for all of the materials that I used in this video. And as always, if you think I missed anything in this video, then let me know in the comments below.